As Kuomintang, China disintegrates, refugees from Nanking and other cities in the plains flee south to Shanghai. Zheng has appealed to America for more military aid, although he has received more than $2 billion since VJ Day. But it is too late to stop the communist time. Shanghai, May 1949. Rocked by inflation, the overcrowded and badly run city is a shambles. Zheng has left orders to suppress any rebellion and shoot all suspected communists. This does not further endear the falling regime to the fearful and embattled people of Shanghai. American and British families are sent home. Some foreign businessmen who choose to remain in the belief that the communists cannot be worse to deal with than the Guomindang will learn otherwise, will suffer confiscation of their businesses and imprisonment. As the ships sail, the Reds are approaching the city's gates. May 25th, 1949. The communists, well prepared politically, take Shanghai without disorder. The new Kuomintang capital will be in Canton, and that too will soon fall in October. October 1st, 1949. In Beiping, Mao Zedong inaugurates the so-called Chinese People's Republic. Zhou Enlai, former peace negotiator, becomes premier. Madam Sun Yat-sen, sister of Madam Zheng, provides revolutionary window dressing for a red China that is to emerge as a powerful and ruthless communist co-equal of Soviet Russia. The communist victory, celebrated with a display of captured American arms, has been won in the face of what, two years before, seemed insurmountable obstacles. In December 1949, Chiang Kai-shek and the nationalist government flee to the independent island of Formosa, 100 miles from the China mainland. Here, Chiang waits, vowing to return. The future remains uncertain. The past, the fall of China to the communists, remains a subject for intense debate. How did this happen? How could it have been avoided? 